Good morning, church. Come on, let's stand and worship. Put those hands together. Let's not be afraid to get loud for Jesus this morning. You are here. As we lift you up, you are riding on our pain. Let's do that. Come on. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Amen. We sing. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Sí, señor. Sí, sí, señor. Amen. Yes, I'm treating my sorrow, and I'm treating my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm treating my sickness, and I'm treating my Yes, Lord, yes, 
Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, and His joy is going to be my joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on, let's sing that verse that says, I am pressed. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, and His joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last, come on, I hear you. yes. We say yes today, God. We say yes every day. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Lift your voices this morning of thanksgiving, of praise. thankful that God sent his son Jesus to go to that cross for us, for you, because he loved you that much. Come on, let's continue to worship. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows. Work 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, those are more than just words of a song today. That is our hope. Because he lives. He said, because I live, you shall live also. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Take heart. I have overcome the world. You know, you might not know the situation that the person around you and behind you in front of you is going through today. But I can tell you right now, we, we have a dear sister in the Lord right here who's just crying out to the Lord. Losing just a, another key family member over the course of these past couple of weeks. But knowing today, knowing today that he is in the Lord's presence. Knowing today that the grave is not the final statement over his life. Michelle, I just thought it was so appropriate today. Didn't think about it, you coming in today. Thinking about her uncle Sammy, Pastor Sammy made such a big difference to so many lives. And, and, and this morning just happened to be that, uh, and Sammy would play guitar. He was a great guitar player, worshiper, songwriter, and just saying, Lord, how appropriate today we have a little Sammy up on this platform today. And, um, and, and, and I just thought, Lord, we didn't plan it that way. We didn't plan it that way. Um, but God, maybe there's something here that you're just trying to remind us from one generation to the next, generation to generation. Thank you, Lord. God, you're our hope today. You're our hope when everything seems hopeless. You're the one that we look to for every need in every circumstance. God, in every pain, through every wound, you're our hope, oh God. I want to remind you today here in this room or maybe you're even joining us online, there is hope today in Jesus. There is hope today in Jesus. Some of you today maybe have even come to that place. I'd never count anything beyond what some people might be going through. Listen, if there are pastors that I have known and looked up to, and I've seen them come to the end of their rope thinking life was hopeless, that tells me that there are people that go to church every week who have come to that place in their lives just wondering, is there hope? Maybe it's not even worth living. And I want to let you know today, there is hope in Jesus. There's hope. Those are more than just a pastor's words or words from a song today. The living God loved you so much that he stepped into the course of this world to give you and me hope, real hope, both now and for eternity. You are not beyond his love. You are not beyond his hope today. He loves you. He sees you. He knows your story. He knows all about you and me. And oh, how he loves you and is reaching out today. And God's word tells us that as we'll draw near to him, he will draw near to us. We're called to draw near today, humbly before him, turning away from sin and turning to God. God, turning to Jesus, and he will not turn you away. He will not. Father, we thank you today for the hope that you give to us. We pray for Myrna today. God, Miriam's sister there, Lord, in that bed, in that place of care. We pray, O oh God, for a peace to come upon her body and soul, for a healing to come there, that even now, Father, you would send forth your word by your spirit, O oh God, and bring a peace over Myrna's body and mind and spirit today, Lord God, that would bring a wholeness and a healing. God, your shalom upon her today. In the name of Jesus, we speak it forth today, Lord God. Let the peace of God rest upon Myrna in this moment, O oh God. 
in the name of Jesus. We pray for Carlos today. Hung, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, there in that place of care, in that bed even today, oh God, in that room, we pray for Carlos, oh God, you would touch him. You would speak there, speak to the depths of his soul that he would know that he would know. It's not just the physical healing that you are interested in. It's the healing of his soul. And that he would experience your presence in a way as he would turn to you, surrender to you. We pray for Carl today, Griot, continue to minister healing and strength to this man of God in his moment of need, O God, in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayers, O God, Lord of mercy and healing and strength and move in his situation. We pray for our sister Carol today in the name of Jesus. Continue to give her healing and, and help and recovery and restoration at this time, O God, and hope in this, Lord God, process of healing. And Father, we pray for young Amalie today there in that hospital room, oh God. Lord, would you touch Amalie today? Would you encourage our sister Ruth, oh God, as mom and Saul as dad, oh God, and, 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 and Lord God, this day, oh God, for Lem and, and for Lord God, for Ellie, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, touch Amalie, Father. Touch her by the power of your spirit, oh God. Raise her up, oh God, even in this moment, oh God. Do that which only you can do, we ask, Father. In the name of Jesus, let it be so by the power of your spirit, oh God. You are able, oh God, and we trust you, Lord God. Oh God, and we pray for little Fatima today, Lord God, Sergio's daughter there in that hospital as well today. Father, you know her need. You hear the prayers that are going up, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, even as we're singing it in Spanish, O oh God, saying, Si, sí, Señor. Si, sí, si, sí, we say yes to you, O oh God. Lord God, we say yes, O oh God, to you today, Lord. And we pray in this moment, O oh God, that you would move, Lord. You would move in Fatima's little body. You would touch this young girl. You would do a miracle in her life, O oh God. And that Sergio and the family and all those, O oh God, and in her church family and all those around, O oh God, would know that they would know that it's you who has done this, O oh God. We pray, Lord God, glorify your name in our weaknesses in our frailties and brokenness. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you thankful that in our brokenness, he didn't just abandon us, but he came for us. He came for us. I pray today that you know that hope in Jesus. You've said yes to him turning from living life your way and turning to him as your savior, as your Lord, knowing that God loved you that much that he's opened the door for you and me to know him and be in that love relationship with him. In just a little bit, we're going to be entering into a time of communion together. Gabby and the team are going to lead us in song as we prepare for that time. God bless you.
musicians for continuing. Thank you for continuing to make a sound of worship to the Lord. Let's pause here for a few moments. Thank you, Lord. good to wait upon the Lord. Amen. Our brother Wayne is going to begin to come and lead us in a time of communion together. Morning, church family. I'd just like to reach out to the chair for one of you to make sure that you have the emblems for today's communion. Anyone who does not have it, could you just raise your hands and keep it raised until it's brought to you? In the meantime, brothers and sisters, I ask that we reflect, we take a grip of our lives today. Examine our hearts before we have this communion today, Lord God. We ask that you look deep at your heart and see and ask the Lord to remove anything, anything of hindrance that is preventing a great relationship with him. I give you a moment to examine your hearts and have your personal time with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you in humility and ask you to examine our hearts today. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any unconfessed sins or any acts that may be hindering our relationship with you. We know that you we know that we are your beloved children, having received you in our hearts and lives and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness. The price you paid on the cross has covered us for all time and our desire is to live for you. Lord Jesus, as we prepare for communion, we are reminded that your life was broken for us. And we celebrate your faithfulness to each and every one of us who receive you. Lord Jesus, I can't begin to imagine the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion. Yet, you took that pain for us. You died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your abundant love. Thank you that your death gave us abundant life. Brothers and sisters, let's take hold of the bread. Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 24 says, for I receive of the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake of the bread.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you. In the same way as we take this cup representing your blood, poured out from a splintered cross, we realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Because of your shed blood for us and your body broken for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that we deserved. You took our punishment. Your pain was indeed our gain. And today, we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave us through this blood that you spill. Brothers and sisters, let's drink of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you, pro you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, each time we take communion, I pray that we all recommit our lives, our hearts, our thoughts, our everything to you. Fill us today with your powerful spirit. As we leave this place today, help us to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old, close to our hearts. Help us to share its message faithfully as you continue to give us the opportunity. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for everything that you have done for us and continue to do for us. Thank you for your grace and your forgiveness. And each and every one of us say, Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let me sing that chorus one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. darkness into glorious light. Sing glory to his name. I think you know those words. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Sing it once again together. Glory to His name. Glory Bible says everyone in his temple cries glory. Everyone in his temple cries what? Glory. Everyone in his temple cries what? Glory. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around to several people around you today. Let them know that it's great to see them. Maybe learn a new name. Meet a new face. 
Hey, Faith Online, Maria Creasel here. As everybody is welcoming each other in the sanctuary, we just want to welcome you personally. Thank you for being a part of our church. We are so glad that you're joining us online. Let us know how we can help you. Just use the chat, click on the links to connect with us. Make sure that you look at Following Faith to know all the different ways to get involved. It's a lot of online ways as well as in person. So listen, we can't wait to see you in person, but for now, we're so glad that you're joining us online. We love you. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Assembly of God. We're glad that you're with us today. If you're visiting with us for the first time, would you just do us a big favor and fill out a connect card for us? It allows us to get to know you a little bit better. We are a family here at Faith Assembly of God, and as a family, we like to celebrate birthdays. What month am I in? May. Oh my goodness gracious. Who has a May birthday? Put your hand in the air. Today, actually. Oh, I got one right here. I got some pointing over here. I got one right here. Oh, we got a lot of May birthdays. Let's sing happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday to you. birthday. God bless you. May the hope of Jesus dwell in you throughout this month. Um, we want to remind you that the best way to give is online, but if you're with us in the sanctuary, you can use the offering box at the back. The, today is the last day to be a part of the choir, which will be ministering on May 28th. So if you would like to join the choir, stay after church today, uh, 1.30. If for some reason you're not able to stay after, but you'd like to be a part or you're online with us and you'd like to be a part, you're going to reach out to Jesse Creasel. Uh, find him and he will get you all the information that you need. Convergence is picking up again. I know this morning you guys were um, doing Convergence at 9.30. We will also be having Convergence at 7.30 on Tuesday on Zoom. Uh, the hope and prayer is that every one of you who are able to see me and hear me uh, would be a part of Convergence. So please, please plan to join us uh, either on Tuesday nights on Zoom or Sunday mornings at 9.30. I also want to let you know that this Friday we will continue with a worship and prayer night that will be at the Faith Center at 7.30. Uh, just a reminder that Wednesday's prayer is now on Zoom only. The, the in-person option is now on Friday, okay? Don't let that confuse you. And then I want to give you a heads up. Women... Women, women, look at me, women. On May 20th, we're going to have a Women's Wellness Day, uh, Body, Mind, and Spirit. So we're going to have an awesome time in the Fellowship Hall beginning at 1 o'clock. We're going to have some healthy snacks. We're going to do a little... Um, um, exercise kind of thing. Um, uh, it is not going to be high impact, don't worry. Uh, and if you are um, not able to move around too much, there will be in the chair options as well. So, uh, and then we're going to have a great word reminding us how our mind and our body and spirit are all important to God and work together. So please plan to be here for that. See Emma Emmanuel if you have any questions uh, or want to let her know that you are coming. Last thing I want to remind you is that we do now have a lost and found. We have lost and found much. Um, so come and find me so that I can get your things back into your hands. Please note they will stay there for one month. And once that month is over, they will be gone. All right? They will be donated to someone else. So, all right, super kids, come on down. That's three, four, and five-year-olds, kindergarten through fifth grade. If you have a super kid and you're joining us for the very first time, we would love for them to go down to our Children's Church program. We just ask that you would go down with them the first time so that you can register them. All right. Come on, little ones. All right, church family, help me pray. Lord, we thank you so much for these little lambs that you have entrusted to us. And we ask right now that you would give Amber and her team all that they need in order to be able to pour your love and your truth into them. We pray that their hearts and their minds would be open and that they would have super fun while they're down in Super Kids. In Jesus' name, amen. Have fun. 
Truth Seekers, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for Truth Seekers. Well, last week we began talking about our call to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, really tying together what we're doing in our convergence study on Sunday mornings and Tuesday nights with uh, some of the themes here on Sunday morning together. And we saw that the victorious and miraculous life that Jesus lived wasn't just because he was God. I don't know about you, but that's how most of us are normally thinking, like, well, of course he was doing that. He's God. Well, of course he was able to overcome that. He's God. Of course he did those crazy, amazing things. He's God. But all of a sudden, the more you look at the word of God, the more you study the Gospels, you realize there's more to it than that that's going on. Yes, he's God. He always was, always is, and always will be God. Right? The second person of the Trinity, as we talk about in technical language. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But there's more to it than that. And again, it was because he was submitted to the Father's plan. And he was dependent on the Spirit's power. Right? Submitted to his Heavenly Father's plan and, 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 and dependent upon the Holy Spirit's power. And that means that as you and I turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. As you and I submit our lives to the Father's plan, as you and I live every day dependent on the Holy Spirit's power, guess what? There's no telling what God is going to do in and through you and me as his church. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. There's no telling what God's going to do. In fact, don't forget what Jesus says in John 14, 12. You know, he says, because you believe in me, greater things than these you're going to do. And a lot of us scratch our heads saying, what in the world? How does that make sense? And we, we spoke a little bit about that. But it's because of the fact that you and I are a little bit more like Jesus than we ever realized. And, well, that's because he was more like you and me than we ever even dreamed possible. That he came fully dependent upon the Father and the anointing, the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. And while much of our time last week was dedicated to focusing on the power that's available to you and me. I mean, we are a Pentecostal church, by the way. We're going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, maybe a little bit with an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent, power, you know, of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, and, and that same spirit that anointed Jesus and even raised him from the dead. Today, I want to focus with you on the fact that there's not only a power, but there's an intimacy that's available to you and me with our Heavenly Father as we take hold of the same, not just power, but practices or spiritual disciplines that Jesus did. Uh, you, you might be wondering, well, well what, what exactly are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about things like, like prayer. I'm talking about things like meditating on God, his, his creation, and His Word. I'm talking about things like the study of scripture, the Bible, talking about acts of service, times of worship, times of fasting, just, just to name a few. Now, now be careful. Somebody say be careful. Thank you for that warning. Thank you very much. Be careful because we can end up doing the right things, but for the wrong reasons. Our lives can be full of good things for the wrong reasons. Anybody ever know somebody like that? They did a lot of right things, church things, good things, religious things, and you're like, they are just a cranky person. They are just a miserable person. Yeah, you can go through the motions, you can even have the right forms, but be missing the right substance. The right forms, but be missing the right substance. It reminds me of a recent conversation I had, I don't know, maybe about a week ago. Zach, I think you were leaving my house that day and you saw me talking to a couple of young ultra-Orthodox guys in our neighborhood. I love the guys. They come and talk with me. They know my background, you know, in terms of Jewish heritage through my mother's line. And so, hey, the rabbi sends them over to me and says, hey, win this guy back for us. <laughs> That's just what happens. So they want me to do the mitzvahs, they want me to learn Torah, you know, not just the written law, but the oral law. I know a lot of you are like, the oral law, what is that? Well, we'll talk about that for another day, you know? And, um, and they were talking with me, he says, come on, you know, maybe you'll do the mitzvah, you'll do the tefillim around the wrist and the hand, and this, you'll pray certain prayers, and we'll, we'll have you do the mitzvahs. I've done it with them before, but I said, guys, this is Zal Chaim. I said, you know, really, to be honest with you, if I do it, my heart's not going to be in it. My heart's not going to be in it. They said, no, no, that doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter as long as you're doing Torah, right? As long as you're fulfilling. That's, by the way, get that perspective. Like, understand that perspective as you begin to speak with people, with friends, neighbors, you know, a family who, who maybe come from that background. Just begin to understand that. And, and they said, that doesn't matter. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, you know, in the Torah, it says, you know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And I said, you know, God said in the Tanakh there, you know, through the prophet, he says, you know, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God wants your heart, not just your behavior. God wants your heart, not just your behavior. Adele Calhoun puts it this way when she writes, thank you, David, for this book and Emma and the family. Spiritual practices don't give us spiritual brownie points or help us work the system for a passing grade from God. They simply put us in a place where we can begin to notice God and respond to his word to us. Is that not what we see in Jesus? Someone who is constantly and intentionally putting himself in a place where he could notice God he could be aware of what his father was saying and doing. He could hear from him. Where he was creating space in his day and in his soul to experience the fullness of the relationship, the intimacy that his father intended for him to walk in. In fact, although I know that it's so tempting to fall into a legalistic, burdensome attitude towards spiritual practices or disciplines, I know it is. We can end up critiquing ourselves and others. We can end up condemning others and ourselves, you know, using our spiritual scorecard. You know, they're not measuring up. Oh, I'm not measuring up. I didn't pray enough. I didn't read my Bible enough. I, I, you know, I didn't fast enough meals. I didn't go to church enough. You know, once again, I pray that you would see these things so much more as God-given opportunities along this journey to experience deeper intimacy and joy in Jesus. That's what it's about. Listen, when my wife and I are able to somehow, with four boys, find a way of getting away, thank you to some of you that have blessed us with opportunities to do so. When we have been able to do that, it's not like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to be with you. I don't know. Going away, being together, having time with one another, it just seems so burdensome. It's just so taxing. I, I can't bear the weight of this. This is just too much for me to handle. No way. We look forward to time away with each other. Right? We look forward to getting away from the rush and the routine and everything else happening around us. Why? Because there's an intimacy and joy that we're able to experience in our relationship with one another when we take time to get alone to be together. Folks, that's exactly what God desires with you and me. An intimacy, a joy, that we can share with him. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Right? The joy we share, more than just a song, it's real life. In fact, of all the disciplines that Jesus put into practice, perhaps none of them shows up more glaringly in the Gospels than the discipline of prayer. Prayer. Now, I get it. Prayer is a big word. Prayer's got all things, every, I mean, so much to it, okay? And I'm not going to go through all that today. But for the sake of our time together, I, I want to focus with you on prayer that involves getting alone with God in order to have a time of intimate communion with him. Because after all, is that not what we see happening in the life of Jesus? Is that not what Jesus had in mind when he said, and when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray. Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing on, in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, 
Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So with that, let's talk about three ways today that the discipline of prayer was at work in the life of Jesus and that God desires to use in your life and mine. Number one, prayer provides renewal in the rush. Can you say those words in yellow with me? Renewal in the rush. Mark's gospel tells us very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Ever feel like that? Everyone's looking for you. Where have you been? I remember coming to that place in my life where it was like, okay, Jesus, I'm going to serve you. And God was just drawing me by his spirit, drawing me by his spirit. My family used to make fun of me saying, John doesn't come out of his room. Why? What was happening? Well, it wasn't just, you know, I don't even know if we had internet at that point, or maybe it was just starting up. No, there was this drawing that was uncanny that had no place in my life before that. I had no desire for that whatsoever. All of a sudden, there was this drawing to spend time alone with my Heavenly Father. Spend time. I pray that as God begins to draw you on a daily basis, even moment by moment, you wouldn't push that out. You wouldn't drown that out. You wouldn't just fill that time and that space that God's calling you to make with something else. Notice what was happening. When Jesus was finally able to catch some alone time with his heavenly Father, here come the disciples saying, everyone's looking for you. Maybe you felt that way where you you couldn't catch a break. It's like another email is coming in, another text message. Someone's, you know, knocking on the door. Whatever it might be, voicemail is like running out of space at that point. And, and, And listen, if you're waiting to find time to get alone with God, please hear me. If you're waiting to find time to get alone with God, tell your neighbor, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Why? You have to make time to get alone with God. I have to make time to get alone with God. For all of us. It might not look always exactly the same, how it plays out, when, where, how long, what that's look, that, that's not my point. But this priority of making time to stop, to pause your day, at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, someplace in between, whatever that looks like for you, making time, being intentional about it. You know, here's the thing. When you put things in context, the Gospels are clear, as you see the Scripture here, that the night before all this, okay, this is the passage, these are the verses leading up to it, the night before this, all sorts of people who were desperate for healing and deliverance, they were coming to Jesus after, I want you to see this, after the sun had set. In other words, the night before was this really long night of ministry. It was a really long night of ministry the night before, only for us to then be told right after this that it was very early in the morning, uh, again, at daybreak, while it was still dark, that Jesus went out to get alone with his Father in prayer. And I don't know about you, but I'm like, wait, what? What? Because if I had this like really long, late night of ministry the night before, I- I'm definitely sleeping in the next morning. First thing, early, like that, no way. It reminds me of when Kimmy and I were first homeschooling for a few years, right? And, and when we had a late night of ministry happening, some of you know this routine, something that was happening late the night before, we're like, hey, you know what? We just made the official word, uh, delayed opening for school tomorrow. <laughs> ah, the beauties of homeschooling. <laughs> some of you are like, wait a minute, honey, we need to talk about homeschooling. And I'm also thinking, Jesus, Jesus, one of the perks of like being your own boss is that you get to make your own hours. So what are you doing getting up first thing in the morning after having such a long, late night of ministry? But then again, Jesus really wasn't his own boss per se, was he? He came in full submission to the Father and operated with complete 
dependence on him. And he also knew that his time was too short to waste. He knew that his call was too great to squander. And the father was bidding him, I believe, bidding him to come. To come and be renewed. To come and be restored in his presence. And what areas do we see Jesus being renewed? Let me just name at least three. Notice that we see Jesus finding renewal first. He's renewed in his purpose. He finds renewed purpose. Notice that when they come looking for him, he says, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. What does he say? That is why I have come. Luke 4 records Jesus saying, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also. Why? Because that is why I was sent. You see, being in the Father's presence gave Jesus renewed purpose. Folks, if there's anything that those of us who have been around church, been around Jesus, maybe been around ministry for years can often use, it's a renewed sense of purpose. Renewed sense of purpose. Why we're doing what we're doing. Because before we know it, we can just be on that hamster wheel, even in church and ministry and serving God, just going through the motions, going through that. We don't even know why anymore. We're just doing it because we've always done it this way, and I guess that's how we'll always do it, and that's the way it's going to be. Man, if there's anything, though, that we need, it's this renewed purpose within us. Renewed purpose. And where are you going to find that? Not simply at another conference. Praise God for leadership conferences like we just had. But it's not going to simply be at a conference. No, it's going to be in his presence. In his presence. Secondly, Jesus found renewed passion. According to Luke, Jesus says, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also. Or more literally, it behooves me to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. Did you ever feel like you have to do something? Oh, like you have to do something. Some of you had a few too many cups of coffee this morning, and you know what you have to do right now. No, 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 no. Never mind. Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Jesus knew that he had to preach about the good news of the kingdom, that it was time for the broken and the lost to be healed and brought home. It was time. It was time for the condemned to be forgiven and for the oppressed to be set free. You see, his time alone with the Father in prayer gave him renewed passion. Renewed passion. I'm not sure where your your passion meter is, is at this point in your life, in your walk with God. But I can tell you this, God doesn't want you just going through the motions or just, you know, doing some sort of religious thing like some sort of spiritual zombie. He doesn't want you walking around in some sort of spiritual trance, so to speak. He wants to give you a renewed passion for him and for people all around you that need to know the love, the truth, and the hope of Jesus. He wants to birth something within you and me that causes us, when we look at people, to say, I I can't help but think about where are they right now in light of eternity. He wants to birth that passion in you and me. He wants to give you that as you spend time in his presence, in prayer. Thirdly, notice that although Jesus was pouring out so much Mark tells us right after that time of prayer and the disciples coming to him that he went forth with renewed power. Renewed power. Mark writes, So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. He gets up, he goes forth with renewed power. I'll never forget what E.M. Bounds wrote back in the early 1900s in a little book that my my senior pastor gave to me decades ago. And he writes, what the church needs today, back in the early 1900s, is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more and novel methods, but men whom the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit can use, men of prayer, men mighty in prayer, women, you can, ladies, you can put yourself right in there. The Holy Ghost does not flow through methods but through men. He does not come on machinery, but on men. He does not anoint plans, but men. Men of prayer. Men and women of prayer. 
Let me ask you something. If Jesus needed renewal in the rush of activity and ministry and voices and people that were coming his way, if he needed a renewed sense of purpose and renewed passion, if he needed renewed power to get up and go forth and preach and drive out evil spirits, do you think that maybe, just maybe, you might need some of that same renewal in your life? Is it possible? Is it possible? especially in the constant rush and activity of modern American life with all of the noise, technology, and busyness that floods our minds and souls. Is it possible? If so, then you can begin to see why getting alone with God, making time on a daily basis to talk with him, to listen to his spirit, to meditate upon his word, to worship him, even to to gaze upon creation. It can be so, so helpful, so therapeutic to our souls. It becomes a means of experiencing God's grace in our lives and renewal in the rush. Secondly, prayer provides provides clarity in the confusion. Clarity in the confusion. Luke's gospel tells us one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who is called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Without a doubt, one of the biggest decisions facing Jesus during his earthly ministry was whom he would choose as the big 12, the 12 apostles. And notice what he does all night prior to making that decision. What does he do? He what? Prays. He prays. We don't know all the details regarding what transpired during that prayer time, but we can only imagine the battle and possible confusion that may have been as he realizes in prayer who it is that he's to call to himself, including a man who is going to betray him. And if that's the case, if that's the case, then it's no wonder that we're told that he didn't just spend a few minutes praying. He spent all night praying. All night. This was no quick and easy. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. No, 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 no. This was perhaps some serious wrestling in prayer happening on that mountain all night. But by the time the sun had come up, the Father had given Jesus clarity. Somebody say clarity. Clarity in the place of any confusion that he might have faced during the night. Jesus got up and he knew what he was to do. He knew the names of those he was to call regardless of the price he would pay. Regardless, I don't know what it is that you might be facing facing, uh, confusion over right now. I don't know the things right now that are going on that have just been swirling in your mind, swirling in your brain, life circumstances, maybe things that you always wonder, God, I don't understand. Why did you allow this to happen? Why this? I I don't know. You, You know. God knows. I don't know what it is that you may need direction for right now. But there's a God in heaven who desires to meet you in your time of confusion. He desires to meet you in your time of confusion. You might be thinking, no, my doubts, my confusion, the things that I'm going... No, God would, he he doesn't, he's not going to want to have anything to do with me. I'm not this great person of faith like other people. No, 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 no. Stop that. That's a lie. God's drawn to you. He's drawn to you even in your times, maybe even especially in your times of fear and doubts and confusion. He wants to meet you. He wants to give you clarity. 
It might not be a clarity that suddenly, you know, resolves all of your questions and all of your doubts, but God desires to impart in your life and mind a clarity even for the next step in following Jesus, even when you don't understand it all even for that next step. But I can tell you this, though. He desires that you would firstly and foremostly draw near to him in faith, that you would depend on him more and more. And I love hearing the stories that are right here in this body. Some of you have spoken with me even recently, where now all of a sudden, you know, what was something that maybe you would try to find time doing, or or maybe you would get around to it, you know, maybe it may not happen or may happen, but now it's like, no, I need this. I need this time alone with God. I need to be in his word. God desires that you would seek him more and more, that seek him in your time of confusion and need, that you would call upon him in prayer. In fact, might I just say on a personal note, that there are oftentimes things I've been circling around and circling around, driving the people around me crazy. I mean crazy, whether it's my wife, whether it's like think tank leadership people here, and I'm driving them crazy because I'm circling around and circling around it, kicking it around and beating around. I know how I am. Everybody said amen. Amen, you know. But can I tell you, all of a sudden, when I'm like alone with God, there is a clarity that he gives me that cannot come from as many conversations. I love, I need the conversations. I need those conversations. But there is a clarity that comes sometimes that is like from nobody else. It's just like from nobody else. And I'm so thankful for that. You see, there's a clarity that God desires to give you and me in the place of our confusion. But the pathway to finding that clarity is intentionality about getting alone with your heavenly Father in prayer. I'm talking about intentionally making space in your life, in your day-to-day routine, to spend time with your Creator and Savior, the only one who can bring clarity in the midst of the confusion. Finally, number three, I want you to see that prayer provides perseverance in the pain. Can you say that with me? Perseverance in the pain. Some of you need this today. Some of you need this today. You're thinking it's going to be found in Pastor John. You're thinking it's going to be found if he just or she just says the right words. God can use whomever. But there's something that I believe your Heavenly Father would want to remind you of today. That it's in his presence you're going to find the stamina you're going to find the wherewithal. You're going to find the perseverance that you need in the midst of the time of suffering and pain. Matthew's Gospel records for us the events surrounding Jesus' final moments with his disciples, saying, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, He again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. and The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer.
Can you imagine the pain that Jesus went through that night before even experiencing the pain of being nailed to a Roman cross? For him to know what he was about to endure. To know. Folks, earlier in his ministry, we find in the Gospels, you can check it out for yourself, please do so. He talked about it. He knew what he was going to be facing. He knew how he would be betrayed and arrested and killed. He knew all this. He's already saying it to his disciples earlier on. But now, now it was right before him. Now it was as if he could begin to taste of that cup. The cup of suffering, the cup of the Father's wrath. So what does he do? You see it. He gets alone with the Father to pray. To pray. There's no cute or neat prayer here, it is messy. And for anyone who would claim otherwise, please look again, it's a messy time. It's a messy prayer. There's an agonizing over whether or not somehow there's another way. If only there was another way, somehow another path that Jesus could take something, anything that does not involve the amount of suffering and pain that he's about to endure, but he resolves to settle for nothing less than the Father's will. In fact, he utters it in prayer three times. May your will be done. And I can't help but see through this time of prayer a courage and perseverance that is birthed within Jesus, within his soul, that enables him to press on with the Father's prayer. So much so that Matthew continues by writing, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? I don't know what this way looks like for you. But I believe God wants to give you perseverance for the way that he's called you to. He doesn't want you to easily be shaken off. I don't know what this way looks like for you. By the way, did you notice again who he says, Jesus says, that the Father would send and put at his disposal dependency on his Father. Dependency on his Father. Where did Jesus get this resolve to persevere? How you see it even in the midst of the pain, by tapping into the strength that only his Father could give him as he communed with him in prayer. In fact, the majority of the manuscripts of Luke's gospel tell us about this event, saying he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. Then we read, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Supernatural strength. What is it that you're facing that you need God's supernatural strength for, that you need perseverance for? What is it that you're facing that maybe nobody else knows that you're facing? 
Do you realize that God wasn't, he, he doesn't want you just trying to do this on your own. He's designed you to stay connected to him. To stay connected to him. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. Thank you, team. Folks, we, at this point, all know for the most part what it's like to be on that Zoom call, to have good Wi-Fi, to start it up, and then before you know it, you'll lose connection. And of course, whenever you're on a Zoom call or something like that, you know very well that it ends up losing connection so that your face is frozen, usually in like the funniest pose possible. It happens. You and I both know it is not about starting with a good connection. It's about staying connected. Staying connected. Do you need today renewal in the rush? Renewal in the rush. Do you need clarity, even in the confusion? Perseverance in the pain. I pray that you would choose to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Make time day by day, a little bit even. If you've not made any time in the course of your day, start, start tomorrow with just a little bit of time. Three minutes, five minutes, start with a little bit. Make time to get alone with your father. He desires for you to be in his presence so that you can experience the intimacy and joy that he's created and saved you for. Just a moment, the team's going to be ministering in song. As they do so, if you want to use this time as an opportunity before you head out those doors, just to spend a few minutes in prayer. Maybe you want to talk to somebody. We have a prayer team here that would be happy to, to talk with you, to pray with you, whatever that looks like. For some of you, you might need forgiveness today. And certain things were happening earlier in the service, and maybe they were just shooting over your head, or maybe you came late, and here you are now, and you're recognizing, I need freedom from the guilt and the shame I've been carrying. Do you know where that's found? It's found in his presence. It's found in Jesus, who loved you and me enough to give his all, his life for you. Maybe you need relief today. You need strength today. You need encouragement. Whatever you need today, just as we begin to worship, just know that this place is open. I'll be happy to pray with you. Others will be happy to pray with you as well. Let's stand together, church. Thank you, team. Yes, I have found a friend in Jesus. He is everything to me. Yes, I have found a friend in Jesus. Yes, he is my everything. Oh, I
Cause I have a shepherd who always keeps me safe. And I found a healer who knows my every pain. But this is my story of redeeming love. I have come to
have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way today. Have your way. As we seek you, Lord. As we seek you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. And he walks. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. The joy we share, what else compares? It's like nothing I've ever known. He walks with me, he talks with me. Your presence. And he tells me I am his own. It's you, Holy Spirit. The joy we share, what else compares?
Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Sister Yvette, just really sensing just so deep in her heart, just to give that reminder that God would want us to remember once again today. Because he lives, as the song says, we can face tomorrow. Regardless of what you're going through, you can take hope knowing that he lives. He lives. He is able. He is able. It's a beautiful thing to be in God's presence. The Holy Spirit is doing work in hearts and lives today that no person can do, no human being can do. It's when we make time to be in His presence, corporately and individually, privately. God will do things that we could never do. This place is going to continue to remain open, available for you. you know, some of you maybe just have uh, the need to, to go. No shame or blame in that. I'll remind you in a few moments when you leave, if you're picking up children from Super Kids, you'll do that through the doors to my right. Stay as long as you want to. Spend as long as you need to. There are people here ready to continue to talk with you and pray with you. Or maybe you just want to spend some time on your own alone before heading out these doors. Can we tell them thank you today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting us. Thank you for giving us the privilege of being able to come into your house, that we are your guests today. Thank you for loving us so, for drawing us in, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. sharing with me that there's there's someone who has a child or a, a sibling that's like a child to you that's facing legal legal matters they're facing jail um, and that we would take this time to to to, to speak and pray over that situation if you would be obedient faithful I just I had to share that I'm sorry but again there's there's someone who's is it your child or like a son to you like like a son or a daughter to you and they're facing
is there is there also anyone else Church, would we pray? Would we pray? Father God, we thank you that you love your children, Lord. That you love them so, Father God. That you see every burden, Father God. You see every, Father God, situation, Lord. And you give strength. You give perseverance, Father God. So right now for this situation, Lord, we come to you, Lord, and we look to you, Father God, seeking you, Father God, asking that you would give favor, Lord, that you would give mercy, Father God, to your child, Lord, that you would give mercy, Father God. Lord, we ask that your hand would be on your child, Lord, that you would give protection, Father God, that you would give favor, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you would supply everything that's needed, Father. Father God, that you would renew your son right now, Father God. That you would refresh your son right now, Father God. A fresh anointing over him, Father God. A fresh anointing over him, Father God. That whatever you bring him to, whatever you bring him through, Father God, your feet your hands, Father God, will be upon him, Father God, and he will be a light, Father God. So I pray right now, Father God, that you would turn every situation, Father God, around right now, Father God. Everything that the enemy seeks to use, Father God, that you would use it for his good, Father God. So I pray right now, Father, that you would break chains, Father, that you would break bondage, Father God, that you would tear down walls in his life, Father God, and that he would come running and seeking you, Father God, seeking and crying to you, Father God, that he would see, Father God, that there is a change, Father God, through your spirit, Father God, that there is moving through your spirit, Father God, power through your spirit, Father God. I pray that you would give him a testimony, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, right now, right now, Father God, give strength, Lord. Strength, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you're faithful, Lord. Thank you that you're faithful, Lord. I pray for every uh, judge, Father God, lawyer, Father God, in that court system, Father God, that you would use and speak to them, Father God, that you would speak to them, Father God, and that you would have mercy again upon your son, Father God, that you would have grace upon your son, Father. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you're faithful, and we expect great things from you, Father God. Would you have your way, Lord? Would you have your way, Father, in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you find the favor, that you find every man, Lord God, that you find the man, Lord God, that you find the man, Lord God, that this will be a complete change, a complete renewal, a complete restoration in mind, body, and spirit, Lord God that the rest of his life, Lord God, he will follow your will, your purpose, your plan for his life because they are plans for good, not for harm, for a good future and a good hope, Lord God. I come against, Lord God, those friendships, those ungodly alliances that he seeks out, Lord. Break that asunder right now. Pull down every chain. Pull down every stronghold, Father God. And Satan, we stand against you right now in the name of Jesus and in the power of his blood. And we tell you right now, you have no authority over the blood-bought Son of God Almighty right now. In Jesus' name, fill him with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord God, and remove everything, Lord God, that continues to hinder his walk in you. In Jesus' name, I proclaim and declare it this day. Freedom in Jesus' name. Amen.
It's about making time for him. It's about giving him the space to do what only he can do. What only he can do. I'll remind you today, whatever the need is, whatever the need might be, it always has to come back to foundations, first things first, about seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, about following Jesus, about turning your life over to him, surrendering to his lordship in your life, calling him not just savior, but Lord. Lord, whatever the need might be, that you and I have made that declaration and that we have committed our lives to following him by his grace and by his mercy. I told you before and it still stands. This place will stay open. This place will be available. Spend time if you want to. There are others here that will be happy to talk with you and pray with you. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just want to <laughs> we want to start this prayer again, Lord, and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for meeting with us today. Holy Spirit, thank you. How we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now go, being joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll be with you. Hey, Faith Online, we want to thank you once again for joining us today. Now, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, please be sure to click the Next Steps link below. If you're having trouble getting to us in person because of life circumstances and would welcome a visit from our care team, please let us know by clicking the Connect link below. Finally, if God's been using this ministry as a blessing in your life, uh, we would love for you to do three things. Number one, subscribe to this channel. Number two, share this link with others. And finally, number three, support the work of this church by praying for us and giving financially as God would lead you. Well, until next time, remember, living for Jesus won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it.